brother. So what I wanted to share with you is a couple of things you can do to make using your outboard MIDI gear uh, more useful. VST instruments are just so much easier to work with. You've got all this great vintage stuff sitting over here that doesn't get used like it should. Or if you are using, you're just playing it live, recording it as an audio track, and you're losing all of the MIDI functionality that you could get. So um, what we'll do is start by adding a MIDI track. Then obviously um, we need to also have an audio track to capture the sound coming out of your, your board. And so something that may keep housekeeping a little easier, if you um, pull down shift, click both tracks, then right click and say move to new folder, drop these both into one folder, you can close it up, and then the MIDI track and its corresponding audio track are just right there. Well, here's the problem. What a lot of people do, what I think what you end up doing is you say, okay, well, I want to use my D50. So you record you some sounds, and then you're plucking around on the on the keyboard itself, finding the patch you like, and so on. And that's, I mean, that's just clunky. And then you got to remember the next time you sit down, oh, yeah, for this to work, I've got to set that back up. Um, it would be a lot nicer if you could just control that from inside here, and you can. So open your Devices menu and go to the MIDI Device Manager. All what a MIDI device is, it's like this virtual um, go-between for your outboard gear and Cubase. So, see? So we're going to install a new device. And you can create a MIDI device for anything. You could buy some obscure thing from a pawn shop and, and do this. But we're going to stick with presets because they're quick and easy, and it's amazing how many are in here. Look at that. There's one for the Roland D50 right there. So you hit OK, and now we have a new device installed. I'm going to select it, and I'm going to point it at the MIDI interface. And if you forget this, it'll it'll make you do this later. It's just easier to do it now. So uh, now we have the option here when I select my MIDI track, instead of pointing it just straight to the interface out into the world to see what it finds, I can point it to the D50 device. Now that in and of itself isn't too spectacular. Let's go back to Devices, uh, MIDI Device Manager, select the D50, and open the device. Select Patch Banks. And now, when you open your Roland D50 here, you will see that it is loaded, that preset is loaded with all of the factory presets from the day that you, you bought it. So with that uh, enabled, come back over here to your inspector, Right, we're looking at our MIDI track. And down here, this, this line where it just says off now instead of USB 1, if you click that, guess what? You can get to all those presets right here. And you can, every time we're changing this or we open the drop down and pick one, um, it's sending a MIDI change command to pick out that number. Now, if you, uh, so we go back to MIDI Device Manager, if you have changed any of those, again, select your device, select open and then patch banks. You can come in here and say uh, you've, this is something different now. You just double click and you call it whatever it is now. And you get the idea. So I'm scrolling around your presets, you'll see your custom stuff. So that may take some time to go through and, and line that up, but it's worth doing because now, if nothing else, if we stopped right here, doing those steps, you can scroll through your presets and better yet, when you finish with a project and you save it, the next time you come back and you open that Cubase project, boom, it's going to send the program change data automatically so that you don't have to remember to go and configure the other keyboard. It'll just happen by magic. So we could stop right there and it would be cool. Let me show you two other things that are uh, make this potentially even cooler. And Kelp, this section is basically for you. So Carter, if you just want to go get another beer, we're going to talk about like manuals and stuff. So you go... <laughs> Go back to your device, open device. The first step, select the device, and then you need to sit down and figure out what do I want to be able to edit. And so um, one that's really popular, obviously, is the wow filter cutoff. In the transmission section, it's asking you what MIDI uh, continuous controller do you want this thing to affect? 71, harmonic content. They call it. The world of the MIDI standard calls it harmonic content, but what that will map to in your device probably is the cutoff, uh, filter cutoff. So let's do, um, so we open this guy again and you see, look, we've got a cutoff. <laughs> Dinner and a show. Let me add uh, two other parameters real quick just so you can see what this looks like. Um, last thing we're going to do here is click add panel. And I'm just going to use general size so you can see what's going on. 
And now we have essentially a graphics tool. Who knew? And we have graphic items on the right, and then a bunch of assignment tools on the bottom. And we'll start by clicking and dragging in a background. Let's call this, uh, let's just make this one box, for, keep it simple. So there's a background, and let's pick out some labels. We'll call, we'll click and drag this over, and we'll call it, uh, and, th and these labels, the, the ones on the right are centered, and the ones on the left are left justified. It took me a year and a half to figure that out. So then um, let's bring in some faders, and we'll create a control. And as soon as I unclick here, as soon as I drop this, it's going to open up the assignment dialog. And it's going to say, Ooh, what, are, what is this fader you just created doing? And uh, we'll point this one at cutoff. We could pick out any of the parameters we set up. And again, if you took the time to tell it I want 45 parameters, we could bring in 45 knobs and map them to stuff. Um, and if you decide at this point that you want to change it, you, you could open the CC, the Continuous Controller menu, and pick out something else. And you see all these blank ones? Um, those are left up to the manufacturer what they want to assign that to, so it would be different for every piece of gear. And there's this thing, uh, looks like a book, probably came in the box, it says something like guide or manual on it. If you open this, uh, yours will make a hissing sound, and you may see moths, uh, and there's words inside and they tell you how to do stuff. But in the very back, uh, you'll be you'll see something that looks like this says MIDI implement. You know what? Just go get kelp. Go get kelp. And, and, and go get the book. And just put those two things together and go get beer. When you would open your instrument, we get this goofy looking thing. Now, uh, but it would allow you to manipulate the attack time on your... See, as I'm moving this fader, pointing at the screen like you can see what I'm pointing at. If you look down at the transport panel, here, I'll bring him up the transport panel. Um, this indicator to the right is MIDI messages. You can see it's transmitting MIDI messages each time I move these. And you can't see this. And I'm not going to pick the Mac up and turn it. But on my uh, my Roland D110, something's changing. And it is, in fact, the uh, cutoff, which is kind of cool. But let me show you. Um, again, I bet you didn't even know this was in here. If you documentation. Operation manual. Now this one won't actually like make a hissing noise when you open it. I'm sorry, I'll let that go. <laughs> um, but if you were to open your operations manual and come into about page 468, here this is the section that goes through step by step how to do all this. Here's an example of what one of these things looks like after somebody has spent like an entire Saturday and probably most of a six pack um, mapping stuff and so on. So so. In your, whenever you select a track, if you hover in the lower left-hand corner, you get this little like ghost box. You're probably already up speed on this. You double-click that, and it opens your uh, track pictures, and you've got a whole bunch that came with Cubase. And if you switch over to User, you can pick out your own. So here's the girl from all the Cubase videos, and this is a picture that I used for my M1 stuff. And I went out to Google and I picked out a, a D50 image to use there. Something that is interesting, though, if you want to make that a little more visible, if you um, if you click this button to show preview, you can come down here, and you can zoom, and you can click and drag and make this a lot more uh, visible. And now you've got a, a D50 thing that looks like a D50 in your track. I wanted to show you real quick is in the MIDI Device Manager again. If you right-click and select Import Bitmap. We drive out to the desktop where that image was. Um, boom, look at that. So you can make a custom background or whatever. But in theory, again, depending on how creative you wanted to get, if you uh, if you took the time to create the, the like bitmap or take a good static picture of like a Pro 1, an actual Pro 1 control panel. Okay, bad example because Pro 1 didn't have MIDI, but a Pro 1 that has MIDI, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you could then actually like drag all the faders on top of the things on the so it would really take begin to take on the, the look of uh, a commercially produced um, graphic interface there. So again, the last 15 minutes probably mostly for kelp, but just wanted to make sure you guys were aware that this uh, capability is in there. And as you add more and more outboard gear, you can use this to synergize it into everything you're doing to a much higher degree. So that's it. I'm going to go let those guys outside before disaster strikes, and we'll talk to you all real soon. See ya.